This is Malik Hook from the University of Colorado, and the topic today is angle recession glaucoma in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. Angle recession of the anterior chamber angle occurs secondary to concussive ocular trauma. It is associated with glaucoma in a minority of patients, and the development of glaucoma may occur shortly after the trauma or many decades later. It is believed that over half of the eyes that experience blunt or concussive force will develop some degree of angle recession, and that presence of a traumatic hyphema will increase the likelihood of coexistent angle recession. Increased angle pigmentation and lens trauma may also be linked with higher likelihood to develop glaucoma. Angle recession greater than 180 degrees has been shown to increase the likelihood of developing glaucoma in both the short-term and long-term follow-up period. A common teaching is the fact that in those with angle recession glaucoma in one eye, glaucoma develops in the contralateral eye, devoid of any angle recession or history of trauma, about half of the time. This led to the belief that angle recession glaucoma develops in eyes predisposed to developing glaucoma already, and may also explain the low incidence of glaucoma overall in angle recession eyes. On examination, gonioscopy is required to evaluate and quantify the presence and degree of angle recession post-trauma. For this reason, all patients with history of ocular trauma should undergo detailed gonioscopy on presentation or soon after as conditions allow, for example, once a hyphema has resolved. If the contralateral eye was free of trauma, the anatomy of both eyes can be compared to identify subtle differences and enhance diagnostic capabilities. Angle findings include widening of the ciliary body band, which results from a tear between the longitudinal and circular muscles of the ciliary body. Iris processes may be torn or absent, and the scleral spur may appear more distinctly white compared to the opposite eye and has been described as quote unquote glistening. A peak pupil may indicate eye wall damage that is subtle, and hypotony may indicate ciliary body shutdown due to inflammation or retinal detachment that requires immediate attention. You can see here on this gonioscopic view of the inferior angle, the transition from what appears to be a mostly normal angle with maybe a little bit more pigmentation. You can see some pigment granules here and also over here. And as you transition from right to left here, you see a widening of the ciliary body band. And I'll try and represent that here by the parting lines. And you can see here much more visible, a widening of the ciliary body band, widening of the angle overall. And it's really helpful to compare this area of the angle versus the more normal angle to the right. It's also helpful to compare gonioscopy to the opposite eye if unaffected by trauma, and comparing the two will often reveal some of the subtle findings that may occur, similar to what you see here in the transition from more normal angle to very obvious widening of the ciliary body band towards the left. Baseline examination of the optic nerve and retina should also be completed, including visual field testing and optic nerve head optical coherence tomography, which can then be compared to future testing as surveillance continues for development of glaucoma. The differential diagnosis of angle recession glaucoma centers on appropriate history and identification of a history of blunt trauma. Unfortunately, many patients do not recall past trauma, and examination is often needed to exclude other disease entities that can also present with unilateral elevation of intraocular pressure, such as pseudoexfoliation, pigmentary glaucoma, eye syndrome, post-surgical trauma, and other rare entities such as carotid cavernous fistulas. On the management side, angle recession glaucoma is treated with topical IOP lowering medications, and all classes of medications may be used except myotics like pilocarpine, which may exacerbate angle recession in the early stages post-trauma. Steroids may be used to decrease cell and flare, and atropine may be used to enhance comfort. Care should be taken to taper steroids as soon as possible to avoid steroid-induced spikes in IOP. Laser trabeculoplasty is believed to be less effective, but is also low risk if attempted. Minimally invasive angle procedures, such as trabecular meshwork bypass stents and goniotomy, have not been well studied in angle recession glaucoma. Filtration surgery may be less successful if done shortly after acute trauma due to increased inflammation and higher tendency for hyphema. Trabeculectomy and glaucoma drainage devices are, however, highly effective in later stages of angle recession glaucoma and represent our primary method of lowering IOP in these cases. Consider visiting keogt.com for more educational materials. This lecture and other lectures can be found on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for your time.